Leah was born an artist. She was painting and drawing in her crib to the point where her parents had to buy her paint because she would use anything she could get her hands on to paint. She has never stopped. She went on to study Western art after high school for four years. After that, she studied Eastern art. She studied Japanese and Chinese calligraphy, brush painting, and scroll painting. And she has never stopped making art. My association with the art world was much more peripheral. I was an art history minor at the New School for Social Research, where I got my bachelor's degree in New York. I went on to graduate school, and I studied for a master's in art criticism, but in all truth, I never wrote my thesis before I went into the Army. My first real job involved working for a sculpture foundry, writing press releases, so I got to associate with artists like Jacques Lipschitz, and I loved that part of my life. I established my own advertising agency in New York, and I always sought art-related businesses to work with. Um, cut to 1992, when I was sitting in my art gallery, of course, uh, and uh, in walked this uh, beautiful woman uh, who turned out to be Leah. And uh, we started to, uh, to talk, and um, soon uh, we were together, and I had the pleasure of watching her make her art. And uh, I found myself offering advice, unsolicited as it may have been, and she, she received it, and uh, we soon found ourselves um, just uh, together in her process of, of painting. And she invited me to actually uh, form a team with her to make art, uh, which we did. And it was just a very uh, wonderful process. We worked together really, really well. And we did, we really did do well making art together. Uh, and then in 2004, our life took a, an unexpected turn. I went to receive an astrological reading from the Dalai Lama's monks of the Gadden Shartse Monastery in India. And I thought it was going to be a 30 minute reading and sort of like simple. And it turned out when I got in there that they said no, it was going to be a two hour reading and it had a sort of serious quality to it. And it was okay at this point for me to if I did not want to do it, it was fine. And if I did, great. So I thought, all right, I'll do it. So we started. And I realized as soon as we started that it was of a serious nature and that they did really understand me intimately. And, um, and that I should really pay attention. So I did and I took it very seriously and I had an interpreter and the um, monk who was doing the astrology reading, I felt really connected to him, like I was about to have a life-changing event, and I was aware of it. And so he said that at this point in time, I needed to change our lives and still paint. He was aware of Stan. And he felt that we were a very good art team, but the focus of the art had to shift because when my purpose of coming into this life was to paint, as I had done in a previous life, as a Tonka painter. And that together we would do this really perfectly. And um, it, they said that it would take a lot of preparation and it could be a couple of years, it could go on, and then at some point we would be ready to formally paint and form a body of work. 
and when that body of work was completed, to bring it back to them, to a Geshe Lama, who would give it his blessing and then we could move forward. So we set out on this journey and part of it was to sort of divide up the days of week where um, Monday was my day to study and they gave me materials to study. Tuesdays we could paint. Wednesdays we could um, work, do business in the art world. Thursdays was a day we could actually work with money. And, um, and, and we did this process for, you know, quite a period of time. And it, it started to feel like familiar to me, the whole thing. I started to feel like something profound was actually happening to us. They had also told us to move and to move to a, a place that we really connected to. And um, maybe more of a rural setting, they thought if we grew our own food and, and lived in a place where we felt that we could really focus on this, it would be good. So we started that process and it finalized by ending up here in Santa Fe, outside of Santa Fe in Galisteo, New Mexico. And this is where we're presently living. And as it turned out, the place we picked to live is on the edge of a caldera, which in some part of myself seems perfect. And uh, we became familiar with um, sort of the, the principles of um, mandalas and iconic figures and um, and that took a while and we sort of worked our way up to a particular day when I had a, a dream and on that day I knew it was absolutely the day to start that I had help and that we had become very comfortable in our new environment and we were ready to receive sort of direction, which is what was happening. I started to have dreams and that was the beginning. They were very clear and to this day it has been a very remarkable experience. And Stan, from day one, when I first came home and told him about the astrology meeting, he said, when do we start? And we have been in that mode. He is the best partner ever. And it's very interesting because um, Buddhist tankas are about sharing. And that's how they begin, because we share. share a little bit about our process. Um, working as an art team, which is unusual, but it's really wonderful, especially with the work that we do, because it is about sharing, sharing the art, and we begin that process by that. I usually, um, from a previous painting, have a sort of a, a spark of something that's to come, and Stan and I both share in that. We both, like with Nam Gama, we both had this feeling of the mirror, really strong, almost too strong to do it because of her presence. It was like sort of unnecessary. So uh, some time has passed now in it, which varies from painting to painting, but they're connected. And I'll have a dream, and in that dream, something came with the mirror, we'll have a vision of the painting. And the next step of our process is to go to the canvas. Initially, that is when Stan comes in, because I'm working more with the ethereal energy, and he's very comfortable with the material part of it. So he will come in, and, and sort of as an architect, to lay out the architecture of the painting. And then we'll go back and forth, and I'll come back in 
with the really strong details and the energy of the dream, and then we'll go back and forth from the center outward, radiating, taking, going back and forth, back and forth, simultaneously listening to the painting, who has a voice very strong, stronger than either of us, of what it would like. And that we pay the most attention to, far more than anything that we're actually feeling. And it guides us. And then we complete the painting. As Leo was told to do in her astrological reading, after the first 10 of this collection of paintings was completed, we took them back to a specific Geshe Lama for his blessing. When he saw the paintings, he giggled and gave us his blessing. And now we're on our way to an exhibition at Tibet House.